Hi, I'm Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the work from home cardigan, which I'm wearing right now. Here are a few pictures of it being modeled. As you can see, this is a lightweight and warm, oversized piece that you can throw on at your desk when things get chilly, or as a final topper when you're out running errands out and about. Everything from tees to turtlenecks works with this one, and you can easily adjust the length as well. To make this pattern, you'll need a USK 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need either four or five cakes of Red Heart Roll With It Melange, depending on what size you want to make. The sizes are Misses, which goes up to a 65 inch bust, and Plus, which goes up to a 77 inch bust. This is meant to have an oversized fit, but you can definitely pick the size for the fit you desire. You'll also want to have your standard crochet supplies, stitch markers, scissors, and a yarn needle for weaving in those ends. Let's go ahead and get started by taking a closer look at the work from home cardigan. Of course, the work from home cardigan is a little big to get here on our table, but I wanted to show you a little bit about the construction. It's made in one piece. We work across the back, the full width, and then as we get up towards the neckline, we split into two pieces. We do one front half, and then the other front half. So you can see the direction of the stitch changes a little bit. It's going up the back and then down the front. After we finish that piece, we simply have to add a seam along each side, leaving some open for an armhole, and then we can add a decorative trim to our armholes and all the way around the front, going all the way around the bottom. So let's go ahead and get started. So we start our work from home cardigan at the back hem with row one. If you're making the misses size, you'll need to foundation double crochet 90. If you're making the plus size, you'll want to foundation double crochet 106. To start a row of foundation double crochet, I have put my slip knot on my hook and then chain two. Then I yarn over and I go to the first chain I made, the one closest to the slip knot there, yarn over and pull up my loop. That loop will become the chain at the bottom of my first stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and pull a loop up through that loop and then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. To continue on with the row of foundation double crochet, I'm going to yarn over, find the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. There we go. Go under both of those, yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through that loop, then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. Let's do one more. We're going to yarn over, go under the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch, yarn over and pull up our loop. Now we've got the chain for the bottom of our third stitch here. So we yarn over and pull up through that chain and then we can yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two to finish our double crochet. So again, if you're making the misses size, you'll want 90 stitches. And if you're making the plus size, you'll want 106. So I'll see you at the end of row one. Now I'm going to stop here on my row one for demonstration purposes. But again, you'll want to make sure to make a foundation double crochet row of 90 for misses or 106 for plus. Now we're ready to begin row two. So I'm going to turn so I can work back into row one and I'm going to start with a chainless starting double crochet. This is my favorite way to start a row of double crochet, but there are other substitutes out there. And if you prefer, you can use a standard chain three. It's up to you. To make the chainless starting double crochet, I'm going to pull up my loop to about the height of a double crochet, maybe just a little bit taller. I'm going to secure that loop at the top on the hook with my finger. I'm going to yarn over with the loop itself and insert my hook right into that first stitch. I will yarn over and pull up a loop. I've still got the top of that loop secured with my finger. I'm going to yarn over again and pull through the loop we pulled up and behind that yarn over. Finally, with just these two loops left on the hook, I can release that top, yarn over and pull through two. If you'd like to see another video of this with perhaps more close-ups, you can look on my YouTube channel for the chainless starting double crochet or the improved chainless starting double crochet videos. After we've got our first stitch made, we are going to skip the next stitch and then we begin our repeat that takes us most of the way across. We work two double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So we've got our first double crochet made, we skip the next stitch and then we go to the stitch after that. 
and we're going to work two double crochets right into that stitch. So there's one and two. Then we're going to work two double crochets right into the next stitch. So there's, whoop, there we go, one and two. Alrighty. Then the next part of our repeat is to skip two stitches. One, two. Then we begin again. Double crochet in the next two stitches twice. So twice in each stitch. One, two, and then two in the next stitch. One, and two. Then the second half of our repeat, we skip the next two stitches, and then we do it again. And we just continue this all the way across until just four stitches remain. You're going to have quite a few more stitches here than I do, so I will meet you when we get to just four stitches left to work into for row two. So as you come to the end of row two, it might look like there are six stitches remaining, but remember our repeat was double crochet twice in the next two stitches, then skip two. So really, we've just got these four left at the end. So after we've skipped those two, to finish it up, we want to double crochet twice into the next two stitches. So there's one and then two, and then in the next stitch, the same thing, one and then two, and then we skip the next stitch and double crochet in the very last stitch so that it mimics what we did at the beginning of the row. So while yours will be a lot larger, this is what your row two should look like. So now we're ready to begin row three. We're going to turn and once again, I'd like to begin with a chainless starting double crochet. Again, there are other methods to do this and some people just like the regular chain three. So whichever method you prefer is totally fine. If you'd like, putting a stitch marker in the top of that stitch can be a big help. For row three, we simply double crochet in each remaining stitch across. So that first stitch is our chainless starting double crochet, but after that, we just double crochet in each stitch across. We'll take a few stitches here so we can see what that looks like. There we go. Whoop. There we go. All right, now we can see it. You can see a little bit of what that stitch pattern looks like. A row of solid double crochet, then double Vs, a row of solid crochet, and double Vs. That is our stitch pattern for the entire work from home sweater. We're simply going to repeat rows two and three, two, three, alternating until you've worked the number of rows for your size. If you're working on the misses size, you'll want a total of 38 rows. And if you're working on the plus size, you'll want a total of 42 rows. Then we'll be ready to continue with our first front panel. Okay, so on my little sample here, I'm gonna say that I have worked 38 or 42 rows. The thing is, you wanna make sure you end on a row to repeat. So that's the rows with those double sets of double crochets. Then we continue on with the first front panel. Essentially, we're going to make the first half of the front and then rejoin and make the other half of the front. So we don't want to break our yarn after we finish making the back. We just continue on with that first front panel. So as always, we need to turn so we can work back the other direction. And I'm going to start again with a chainless starting double crochet. Indeed, we really want to maintain our stitch pattern here throughout, so I'm not going to be doing anything revolutionary. It's just that we need to stop about halfway through the row. It's not fully halfway. We have a few stitches that we leave unworked in the middle for the neckline. So again, it's going to depend on which size you're making. This is, since the previous row was the two sets of double crochet rows, this is just a row of solid double crochet. So depending on what size you're making, you're going to double crochet on a cross. If you are making the misses size, you'll double crochet in the first 42 stitches, including that first one. If you are double uh, making the plus size one, you will want to double crochet in the first 50 stitches, including that very first one. The remaining stitches in the rest of that row, we're going to leave those unworked for now. So when you've got those first 42 or 50 stitches made, I will see you at the end of row one for our first panel. So after row one of your first front panel, you should be almost, but not quite, halfway across your full back here. Like I say, we're gonna have a few stitches unworked in the middle there that make our neckline. So after that, we're ready for row two, and rows two, three, on through 
for the rest of this front panel, we're really just maintaining that same stitch pattern we did before. So we turn, right now we ignore the rest of those stitches, go ahead and make our first double crochet using whatever method you prefer to use for that. There we go. And then skip the next stitch, two double crochets in each of the next two, just as we were doing before. So there's our first two, then we need two in the next one. Let me straighten out my yarn a little bit there. I always like to pre-pull a little bit of it out, even when I'm working from a cake, like Roll With It Melange, so I can have full control of my tension there. So now I've got a little bit more of it out of the cake. There we go. All right. And then we skip two stitches and do that all again until we get to those last four stitches. And of course, on our little sample here, I think I'm probably already there. So we do two stitches in each of the next two. We've got two more after that. So we're gonna finish that off the same way we finished row two of the back. We skip the next stitch and simply double crochet in that very last stitch there. There we go. So you can see now we're right back to that same stitch pattern that we used for the back. And we continue repeating rows two and three. Two is like this, three is another row of the solid double crochet straight across until you've made a total of either 39 or 43 rows, again, depending on size. This time you'll want to end on a row three rep, which is the row of solid double crochet. At the end of this front panel, you're going to go ahead and break your yarn so we can add it to the other side for the second front panel. So now we have finished the first front panel of our demo. You can see here, I finished on a row of solid single crochet, not the double Vs. So I'm going to go ahead and break my yarn. So I will pull out my little yarn cutter here. Slice right through that. And then I can simply pull that end through to finish. Now we're ready to rejoin for our second front panel. We want to make sure that we join from this side because it's another row, just like we did that first row of the first front panel, a row of the solid double crochet. So we want these to be going the same direction. On our full sized example, we skip six stitches and that's for both sizes, both misses and plus, we skip six stitches in between. That becomes right along the back of the neck here. On my little guy right here, I can only skip two so that I've got enough room to demo our second front panel. But again, if you're making the misses or the plus, you want to skip the next six stitches and then join to the stitch after that. So what we're going to do is we're going to join with a standing double crochet. Let's go ahead and do that together. To make a standing double crochet, I'm going to hold on to my yarn end with my non-hook fingers in my hook hand to give it a nice stabilization. Then I'm going to yarn over twice, the usual fashion, towards me, and then I want to pick up my project and find the stitch that I'm joining to. We insert our hook just as we normally would. Let me get that out of the way so it's a little easier to see here. We're going to yarn over, pull our loop up through the stitch. And you'll see I've still got a hold of that tail end there so it's nice and stabilized. And then I'm simply going to yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through that loop and behind that tail end right there. Then I can use one of my stitch markers to hold on to that front loop and the tail as the top of that stitch. After that, the rest of row one of our second front panel is easy as can be. We simply double crochet in each remaining stitch across. Of course, we should have the same number of stitches in this row one that we had in row one of our first front panel. So a total of either 42 or 50 stitches, depending on the size you made. And that should take you right across to that very last stitch. Then we continue on just as we did with our other front panel, alternating between the double crochets uh, in pairs with the skipped stitches, sort of our lacier row, and the row of simple double crochet all the way across. Again, we want to make the same number of rows as our first front panel, either 39 or 43, depending on size. If you'd like to customize the length of your sweater, either shorter or longer, you can simply add or remove rows, but you'll want to do that same number to the back and the front. So if you add three rows to the back, you'll want to make sure to add three rows to each of your front panels. Then just continue on until you've made the full second panel. So this is what your work from home cardigan should look like when you've finished that second front panel. You can see it kind of makes a big U shape. We've got our back, our first front panel, and our second front panel. We want to do one more thing before we break our yarn, 
and that is simply work a single crochet edging all the way around the piece. And we do this because it's going to make it easier to seam up and add our edging. It is optional, but it's something I like to do. So the way I do it is to simply single crochet along the previous row, chain two, then work down this panel, working two single crochets in each, uh, in, along each row, two single crochets in each double crochet. Then we single crochet in those stitches that we skipped. Remember, you'll actually have six of them. Two single crochets in the side of each row here, chain two, work across the top of this row, chain two, same thing down these sides, two single crochets in the side of each row, chain two, single crochet across our foundation row, chain two again, single crochet up this final two, final side here, again, two single crochets in the side of each row, and then you can simply chain two and join to that first single crochet you made. Then we're ready to seam up the sides. After you have added that edging, then it's time to go ahead and seam up the sides of your sweater. So now you get to decide which one's going to be the right side and which one's going to be the wrong side. It's totally up to you, the crocheter. It's totally reversible at this point. If you like this side on the outside best, then you want to have it facing up. If you like the other side on the outside best, then you want to have it facing up. Then what we're going to do is that we're simply going to fold forward those two front panels. Remember, they are a row longer than the back panel, so we don't want to have a complete total match up here. We want to match them up at the bottom so that that last row of each panel meets the very first row, that foundation row that we started the back with. Then we seam up the sides. Let me pull these little ends here out of the way so it's a little easier to see on our little demo piece here. But we want to start hemming up the sides. We start at the hem and then work our way up. So it depends on what size you're making. If you are making the Mrs. size, you'll seam up 15 inches along the side. And if you're making the plus size, you'll want to se seam up 16 inches along the side. You can slip stitch those stitches together along the side. You can whip stitch. The joining method is completely up to you. It's whatever you prefer. We just wanna make sure that we leave this end bit here open because that's gonna be our sleeve opening where our arms go. So I would suggest you do your seam and then try it on. See if you prefer a little bit more open of a sleeve or a little bit smaller of a sleeve. You can also adjust this seam length for you and make it just the length you prefer. So we want to do that on both sides. After that, we'll have the basic shape of our cardigan made and it's just time to add those final edgings. So after you have finished seaming up those sides, we want to go ahead and turn our cardigan right side out so that now the right side, the fabric that we like best, is facing out. Then we're going to go ahead and join to body opening round one here for our edging. So we want to go ahead and join again with a standing double crochet. So let me find the end of my yarn here. I can see it, there it is. I'm going to hold on to the end of their yarn there, yarn over twice, just like I did before. And then as I say, I like to join near a seam, but you can join anywhere along this bottom hem. Now, if you've made that single crochet edging all the way around, then those would be the stitches you'd be working into right now. But we're simply going to double crochet in each stitch around of this body opening. So that's going to take us across the bottom. And at the corner, if you did that single crochet edging, you'd have a chain two there that you can work five double crochets into. And then we continue on across the front opening, which takes us to that back neck opening, down the other front opening, then we get to that corner and we put five in that corner again and then simply continue across the back till we came right back to where we joined. So let's go ahead and take a few more of these stitches together. And again, we're pretending that right now we're working into that row of single crochet that we worked all the way around. It is optional and if you're short on yarn, it's certainly the row that you can eliminate easiest. However, I do feel that it gives it a really nice edge here to work our edging into. So again, we are working the body edging, the edging around the body and neck opening. And this is round one. So when you get to that corner chain two space, you want to go ahead and work five double crochets all into that chain two space. And what that's going to do is bring us really nice and gently right around this corner. So that's, I believe, four. I need one more. There we are. So you can see how that curves brings us right around the front and now we can continue to work into those single crochets right up the front panel. So at the end of our body opening round one edging, 
We join with the slip stitch to that first stitch we made and we'll be ready for round two. To make round two, we start with a chain one and we're going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the first stitch. So when we look at the top of our stitch, the front loop is the one that's closest to us and the back loop is the one that's furthest away. It's always relative to you, the crocheter. So that first stitch, since we joined to it, it's a little harder to see. I like to pull that join over a little bit so it's a little easier to see for me. And then I'm going to yarn over because we're making a half double crochet. And then I'll go right down in the middle of that V so that my hook goes under just that back loop. Then I'll yarn over and finish my half double crochet as usual. Then I'm going to front post double crochet in the next stitch. So to do that, we yarn over, then we're going to go in on one side of the post of the next stitch. Let me move my finger out of the way here so that's a little easier to see. We're going to go in on one side of the post and bring our hook up on the other side. Then we yarn over, pull that loop up around that stitch, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Then we can begin our repeat with those same two stitches. Half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, so we find that back loop only to go under, and then front post double crochet around the next stitch. Oop, let me try that one again. Sometimes when we work around those posts, the hook likes to get stuck, so we just take it out and start again. Front post double crochet. Let's do another repeat. Half double crochet in the back loop, front post double crochet around the next stitch half double crochet in the back loop of the next stitch, front post double crochet around the next stitch. And we just keep doing this all the way around. The only time we really need to do anything different is when we get to that center of those double crochets that we worked in the corner. So let's see here. I'm going to keep working in pattern until I get to that center one. So we need to stop and look. There are those five double crochets that I worked into my corner chain two space. Here's the center one. I landed on a front post double crochet. So in that corner, we want to work three stitches, but we want to maintain our stitch pattern. So I'm going to do a front post double crochet, followed by a back loop only half double crochet, followed by another front post double crochet. So in that center of those five stitches, we want to work three stitches, but we want to maintain our stitch pattern. So if the stitch before that had been a front post double crochet, then in that center one, I would have worked a half post back loop only double crochet or a back loop only half post. Let me try that again. A back loop only half double crochet followed by a front post double crochet followed by another back loop only half double crochet. So you can just follow the pattern around. It kind of depends where you start just where you're gonna land up. So make sure you work three stitches, just maintaining that stitch pattern when you get to that corner one. So that's my three stitches. So then I would just find the next one and go right back to working in pattern. Back loop only half double crochet, front post double crochet right around the next one. So it's only at those corners that we have increases. Otherwise, we simply maintain that stitch pattern all the way around. So when we've worked all the way around for round two, you can go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch you made in this round. Ideally, you if you started on a half double crochet in the back loop, you'll end on a front post double crochet. Sometimes though, maybe we missed a stitch, maybe a seam was a little off, and all of a sudden you'll find that you started with a half double crochet and ended with a half double crochet. This is one of the reasons I like to start these rounds right near the seam. It gives us an opportunity to fudge it a little bit if we want to. You can, of course, just go ahead and slip those two stitches together. But if you need to, you have an opportunity to work a little extra stitch in there. Maybe put a little extra double crochet in. Doesn't really matter. Maybe finish off that look. You can fudge it a little bit at this point. It's going to be in the seam. Odds are nobody is going to see it. And the next round, the stitch count doesn't matter. So however you like to finish that off, don't worry. You don't have to pull back whole, all your sweater and fix that. You can fudge that right there at the seam. Nobody should be getting that close to the hem of your sweater to see if you missed one stitch right there at the seam or if you added a little extra one. Round three, we're simply going to chain one and single crochet under both loops of every stitch all around to give us a really nice final edging. Then we're ready to move on to the sleeves. Finally, all that's left is to add our sleeve edging, which you want to do, of course, for each sleeve opening. 
Now again, if we've worked that single crochet edging all the way around, then we've got a nice field of single crochets here to work into. I recommend again that you join right by that seam. And this time we do wanna make sure that we work an even number of stitches. So if you work all the way around and you've got an odd number of stitches here at the end, go ahead and add one more. Again, another reason we like to start right by the seam. This will be right in the armpit, nobody will notice. That first round, it's the same set of um, stitches that we did around the rest of the body here. First round, double crochets. Second round, half double crochet in the back loop only. Front post double crochet in the next. And then finally, a third round of single crochet all the way around just to give us the same look that we had on the hem. So here's a closer look at that finished edging. This is the one going around the body and neck. You can see here we've got those three rows. I worked some extra stitches right there in the corner and it gave us a really nice finished edge. I'll pull up the sleeve opening here and you can see the same thing. It's those same three rows worked all the way around. If you wanted to, you could go ahead, of course, and add longer sleeves. These come down as worn to about elbow length. But if you wanted a longer sleeve, rather than switching to the uh, post stitches and half double crochets in the back loop right away, just more, make more rounds of double crochet. Make that sleeve as long as you'd like it to be. Then you can cap it off with rounds two and three as written to get the same look for your cuff. And that's how to crochet the work from home cardigan made with Red Heart Roll With It Melange. I hope you'll give this pattern a try. Remember, it comes in both misses and plus with an up to 77 inch bust. So it's sure to fit just about everybody. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.